What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you for joining us. Today we're talking about front wheel drive driving techniques and how it can help you to become a quicker driver. To do this, we're going to cover four main areas. Those areas are vehicle dynamics, braking, steering inputs, getting on the power. Stay with us. Okay, so the first thing we need to talk about is vehicle dynamics. This plays a huge role in, in how you drive a front wheel drive and how it reacts to you and how you can extract the most pace, pace out of it. So the first element we're going to be talking about is weight distribution and weight transfer. So in a front wheel drive car, normally your engine is located in the front alongside the, the, the gearbox all right and that play that places most of the weight over the front axle um, generally this is 60 could be around 55 to 65 to 70 percent of the mass of the vehicle is over the front wheels or across the center line of the the vehicle then on the rear you've got you, you have the rest 35 to 30 percent um, of the of the vehicle mass over the back wheels that's just something to keep in mind as we go forward so let's talk about let's talk about braking and acceleration okay so when you're driving and you're coming to a, a braking zone and you get on the brakes what happens is that a lot of the mass of the vehicle shifts forward and loads up the front tires of the car. So that makes that makes your front tires places a lot of mass on the front tire and reduces a lot of the mass on the rear tires. So in this illustration it basically makes the car want to topple over. That's you know an exaggerated uh, view. So as you get on the brakes the weight transfers to the front and basically loads up the front wheels it also lightens up the rear wheels so a lot of that mass that's already ahead of the center line of the vehicle is now amplified because a lot of the mass from the the rear is transferred to the front just by pure braking force the same is applied when you accelerate the same will happen a lot of the weight will move to the rear of the vehicle that'll affect um, in turn both of these actions affect grip levels so it's one one component you have to just keep in mind so this these are very very basic concepts of vehicle dynamics but it's, I think it's the most important when understanding what the vehicle is doing so those are, are braking and acceleration so g-force being 1g is one times the the gravitational pull of the earth okay so cornering g's or lateral g-force is when you you're going round a corner in this case the corner direction is left when you go in through the corner there's going to be a turning force or an outward force a reactive force pushing you outwards also known as centrifugal force so when you're going through the corner in any vehicle we, we're talking specifically around uh, front wheel drives here um, but in any vehicle your outside wheel is going to load up your two outside wheels and your inside wheels are going to become lighter than the outside wheels This is now obviously because there is a force being applied here and a force applied similar to that in a very simplistic view of, um, 
of, of the load transfer in the vehicle. So think about this, you brake, you go through the, you turn into the corner, as you turn in, it's the same as if you're in a road car or driving on the street, as you go around the corner you can feel the weight of, of everything in the vehicle move to the one side. This is important to know or to understand because it affects the amount of load on the tire. And this is critical when it comes to your inputs in driving a front wheel drive car. Same, it's very similar, well, it's, it's good to understand that when you're driving a rear wheel drive car, specifically a front wheel drive car because it affects um, the balance. Um, so we've covered, in a nutshell, we've covered braking forces. When you get on the brakes, it adds weight to the front axle, reduces weight on the rear axle. When you go through a corner, if you're turning left, in this case, corner direction is that way, the car is turning that way, it's adding weight to the outside wheels and reducing weight on the inside wheels. So what does that actually mean? What it means is, if we look at, if we look at the loads on the actual tire, and this is where, really where we're getting to, is we're looking at what's happening with the tire because your tire is is effectively what is keeping you on the ground and is what gives you the feedback through the steering wheel obviously affects your speed through the corner so in a normal situation you if you look at the whole tire you only have x amount of contact patch on the road when you're driving. That generally is about the size of your hand, give or take. Um, when you are braking and accelerating, that contact patch size changes. Um, it, it's largely dependent on the tire and the conditions and the grip levels, etc. But what you're trying to do is um, manage that contact patch and manage the loads on the contact patch. So if you are going, if you're braking or accelerating, the load on the tire is straightforward. It's either forward or backwards. It's the same as on the chassis. So when you get on the brakes and the weight transfers, it transfers in a, in a linear direction onto the tire, um, which may in fact increase the contact patch. Uh, when you accelerate, obviously, in a front wheel drive now the weight transfers to the back so therefore it might even reduce the contact patch depending on tire pressures etc. Um, also weight distribution in the vehicle but we're not going to talk about setup we're going to, this is mainly around driving. When you're going around a corner let's say the corner direction is this way um, there, are, there are a couple of forces acting on the tire first of all there's a lateral force because as you go around the corner, as we explained here, there's a force that's trying to push the car outward. That's your centrifugal force. So that, me that effectively is that force, that load that's being applied to the tire. Then as you accelerate, there's additional forces um, in a separate direction. So why are we talking about this? Why is it important? Well, this all affects um, braking and it affects acceleration and it affects turning and understa understanding how much you can ask of the tire. Because in, in a front wheel drive car, you are asking the front tires to accelerate, so provide you with grip as you pull away and as you feed in power. You're asking the tires to brake. Accelerate and braking are not happening at the same time. But you are also then asking the tire to provide you grip when you turn. So now it's changing the direction of the, of the loads in the tire. But as you get onto the power, then also you're adding a third element by applying a, an acceleration force within the tire. So if you overload the tire, it's going to break away and um, tire dynamics are really play, play a massive role in, in, 
in, um, in any race car, road car, track day car, in any situation, tyre dynamics are critical. Let's talk about braking. In a street application, if we're driving along and we're coming to a traffic light or um, a corner, you're going to apply the brakes in a very modular, slow fashion. So, in other words, as you're coming to the corner, you're going to, if we use a scale of 1 to 4, 1 being soft, 4 being very hard pressure on the pedal, as you come to the corner, you're going to apply the brakes in a, in a slow manner, starting from 1, and as you, as you come to, close to the corner, you'll, you'll increase the pressure, so it'll be one, two, three, four, as you get to the corner. Or the, uh, sorry, the, let's say it's a stop or an intersection. As you come up to the intersection, you're going to slowly apply the, apply the pressure um, from a very soft position to a very hard position as you stop the vehicle. Um, this is obviously for comfort. You don't want your passengers flying all over this place, especially if they're not anticipating any sort of hard inputs on the vehicle. But in a race application, especially um, especially if if you're in a in a in a dice with a few vehicles or you're going for a qualifying lap, you want to get so you want your inputs to be direct and firm and um, uh, committed. So effectively, if you come to a corner in a any race car. Um, you're going to you're going to apply the brakes very hard for a very short period of time So it's going to you're going to do it in the reverse order So as you come up to the corner, you're going to hit the brakes You're going to get off the power and get straight onto the brakes and You're going to do the reverse you're going to start off with four and then as you come close to the corner You'll um, go from four three two one just before you turn into the corner So um, it's something to remember. If you're in a race car, especially a front-wheel drive, you want to be very you want you want your inputs to be very committed. So if you're coming up to the corner, you get off the power, get on the brakes, four, three, two, one, and get off the brakes again. Um, you don't want to kind of be half on the brakes or not sure when to um, or when how much pressure you want to apply. That obviously all comes with time, see time and understanding where your braking markers are on the circuit. So um, important thing to know as you come up to the corner in or uh, in intersection in a street car you start off with very soft pressure and as you come to the stop you, you, you end with a very hard pressure. In a race car it's the reverse. When you come to the corner you start off with a very hard pressure and then you end off with a very soft pressure. Now this duration of time is much shorter in a race car um, because you, your, your inputs need to be very very concise and um, you need to then transition from the brake to the accelerator or be ready to transition to the accelerator and let, let the car be in a state of balance as you're turning in. Okay, let's talk about trail braking. What is trail braking? Trail braking is a term used when you carry the brake into the corner. So effectively, you, um, as the driver, let's do it this way, as you come into the corner and you start turning the wheel to turn into the corner, you still have brake pressure on the pedal. What that does is that effectively helps the nose turn into the corner. It, it, it keeps load applied to the front wheels or you increase the load on the front wheel thereby increasing the contact patch and the mass specifically on the outside wheel and allows you to turn into the corner or turn if you especially if you're carrying more speed allows you to um, maintain or increase the grip levels on the tires. Let's talk about um, what's actually actually happening as I mentioned before. As you apply the brakes 
the load transfers to the front axle. So a lot of load is applied to the front two wheels. And also keeping in mind that a lot of the mass already is over the front axle. So getting on the power, you're probably increasing this load to 80%, maybe even 85% of the mass over the front center line, which makes the rear very light. If you then start turning the car while still holding on to the brakes quite, quite hard, what will happen is that the rear is going to come round. You'll see clips of, clips of that happening now. So, trail braking is effectively carrying the brake into the corner, but in a front wheel drive, because there's so much mass over the front wheels already, as you trail brake into the corner, inevitably what's going to happen is the vehicle is going to over rotate and you're going to slide around. So, trail braking in a front wheel drive is not recommended, especially with beginners um, and especially in high speed corners. You don't want to upset the balance of the vehicle too much. You always want, you want the vehicle to be nice and happy. Um, especially when we come to the next step which is uh, steering inputs so trail braking in a front wheel drive is a big no-no unless you're extremely experienced and you've you you know the setup of your vehicle very well and you're able to um, use it to your advantage in certain situations um, again it might only be certain situations it might be a case where the tires have started to go, on, go off and um, you need to try and increase the grip levels in the front to make um, a very tight corner. But again, this is, these are varying situations. So as a rule of thumb, especially, especially if you're starting out, um, it's, I always tell new drivers, the first thing to remember is you're braking the car in a straight line and you get off the brakes before you turn the wheel. It's critical that you do this. Make sure you do all your braking in a straight line and then turn the car in. So effectively, if we're coming up to this corner, um, let's say that's the braking zone, you want to start braking. So it'll be four, three, two, one, get off the brakes, turn the car and go around the corner. Again, you don't want to carry the brakes through the corner because that's going to happen. And even if you do catch it, you're still going to lose a lot of time on the exit of the corner because the car will be sliding and you're now having to counter that slide by catching and turning the wheel. And that slide is just going to scrub off speed and kill your exit on the corner. So, trail braking. Big no-no in front wheel drives. Okay, the next thing we're going to talk about is steering inputs on a front wheel drive car. Steering inputs critical to maximizing corner entry, mid corner and corner exit. Specifically corner exit. Because all you, you're always setting the vehicle up for your corner exit. Because corner exit is everything. Um, especially if you have a long straight, you need to really maximize your corner speed and, and the exit to, to gain the most out of the, the straight. Let's say you've, you've taken your street car and you've put on coilovers or you've put on a nice set, uh, suspension setup with some nice semi slicks. The first thing you will notice is how nimble the car is and how it reacts to an input. If you drive a race car, a front wheel drive race car, that's one of the first things you will notice is how nimble a front wheel drive is. That is because, um, again, the, a lot of the mass is over the front wheels and um, you're using, obviously, the front wheels to steer. So, front wheel drives are normally set up to be quite very nervous cars 
especially on turning, depending on the category and the suspension and the driver, etc. So what happens when we turn the wheel? So when you turn the wheel, again, the load transfers to the outside tires. So if you're turning left, the load will transfer to those tires. If you're turning right, the load will transfer to those tires. So you might have seen some pictures of, of um, race cars. The car's going through the corner and the attitude of the car is that such that it's really, it looks like it's about to roll. The car is like leaning over this uh, so much on the front wheel and the rear wheels are 200 mils off the deck. That's really bad. The reason that is bad is because that, what you are doing is you are overloading that front tire. You, in a front wheel drive, you, it's um, a, a large portion of uh, consistency and pace is about managing the temperatures and the carcass of the tire. Overloading the tires means that the tire will generally go out of its temperature range and then overheat. And then in turn, that will reduce your grip and reduce your pace. So, um, we want to avoid overloading the tires at all costs. That's why um, you don't want to sit and brake and especially trail brake for long periods of time or all the time because effectively all you're doing is you're applying so much load to that outside front tire it just overheats the tire. A lot of the time also what can happen is by overloading the tire um, you can you can overload the tire by not taking the right line so effectively turning turning the car in too late and then you you transfer so much of the weight to the car um, that uh, it then becomes it gets that attitude so if if you're going through the corner like this you turn in very late and then it effectively does that to the chassis so if you run the corner really deep and turn in like there to try and maximize the exit um, what could happen there is is what I was explaining where you 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 turn in so late that you you almost do that with the wheel and then it transfers all the load or so much of the load to that front left tire that it um, you get that weight transfer and then it lifts the wheel up so if you're doing that consistently all it's going to do is it's going to overheat the tire so you need to adapt your driving so that you don't do that what I always tell new drivers is that what you want to do is you want to keep the load transfer as smooth as possible so do your braking in a straight line get off the brakes turn the wheel nice and smooth your input must be very smooth so turning into the corner you want to turn the wheel nice and smooth and then release the wheel nice and smooth you don't you want to avoid a situation where you get to the corner and you have to do that or um, get on the brakes get on the, get on the brakes get off the brakes turn it so that the car does that you you ideally want to avoid those kinds of situations and that brings us to the trajectory of the car the trajectory of the car is very important why is this important because it affects your exit so if you turn into the corner too early so if you come to the corner you 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 turn in and this is natural the, all of this is natural this is just part of developing your driving and your skills so there's a balance between turning in too early so this this point would be too late okay let's say you you come to the corner and you turn in over here because you maybe you're trying to defend the corner or maybe you sometimes when you are really um, pushing for pace or a hot lap you, you you almost start to overthink things and then you anticipate the corner too much so 
um, you get to the corner and you, you're busy processing too much in your mind you're not thinking and then you turn in slightly early so this would be too early what's going to happen well if you turn in here all that's going to happen is you're going to have to release the wheel and then it's going to shoot you out this way so if you turn in here it's going to want to shoot you out to there effectively which means you're going to have to get back off of the power and turn again so you 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 then losing time because that's going to kill your exit here so effectively it's going to slow you down significantly so turning in too early turning in too late will hurt your pace turning in too early will also hurt your pace obviously the best point the best turning point is going to be in between these two so that's what I talk about when I talk about trajectory so let's say for instance the turning point is around here what you want to do is you want to line the car up so that when you turn the vehicle in its trajectory is going to be such that it allows you to exit or get the best exit so maybe it's not there maybe it's somewhere here so that when you turn the vehicle in um, the trajectory of the car basically gives you um, minimum turning on exit because what you want to do is you want to turn it in so that you can almost do that that being the center line of the vehicle so your wheels will effectively be like that so that's where trajectory comes in it's a very similar on a bike um, on bikes that also want to try and turn it so that when you feed the power in the bike's trajectory is pointing basically in a straight line on the exit and that's what you want you want to be able to try and turn it in so that when you start feeding the power in it gives you a really nice trajectory on the exit and you don't still have to turn when you're trying to feed the power because now you're asking the wheels to do two different things again and um, effectively what you're going to do is then break the traction on the tire so turning in too late is going to effectively overload the tire and you might it might induce um, understeer and then so what we call under into oversteer so it might induce initial understeer and then you grab some more steering which will then induce oversteer so if you turn in too late you might have that effect if you turn in too early what's going to happen is you're going to run out of corner and you're going to have to get off the power turn and, and get on the power again so that's what you don't want to do you want to find that middle spot where it gives you the right trajectory when you finally get the car turned and you 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 hit the clipping point and it it shoots you out the exit in a straightish line that's what you want um, let's touch on apex and clipping point quickly the apex of the corner is basically the center line of the corner pretty much so that point the clipping point is effectively where you're going to clip the apex, uh, clip the corner, the inside of the curve. In this case, let's say you're clipping it with the front tire over here. So therefore, the clipping point is not the same as the apex. You've got that distance between the two. All right. So the apex of the corner is the center point. The clipping point might be different based on. Um, the trajectory you're trying to carry it'll also be different in a front in a rear wheel drive car your turn in and power application will be very different in a real in a rear wheel drive car so we get to power application in, the, in a minute I call balance of grip what does that mean when you're approaching the corner and you've now identified the perfect turning point you turn into the corner and now you're on that 
period of time between being off the brake, being on the brake and being on the accelerator. So if you come to the corner, you brake, you get off the brake, you turn the car and in the time it takes from you to turn the car in here it, to rotate and you feed the power on, there's a period of time that you're in a neutral state. That period of time needs to be very short, but it needs to be there. You can't be um, either on the brake or on the gas. It just doesn't work like that. When you're in that transitional period, that's where this balance of grip comes in. So what that means is, if you come into the corner too fast, or you get on the power too early, it's going to want to understeer. So it's going to want to push the, the front of the car outwards. If, which means that you'll have to get off the power and get back on the power again. If you turn in too late and you maybe trail brake a bit, it's going to cause the car to oversteer. What you want is you want that balance between the two. So you want to be in a, in a place where you've now hit your turning point, you turn the vehicle in and it's in, a, it's in a sweet spot where the car is almost floating and you're turning around the corner. It's, 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 um, it's quite a, it's a beautiful thing once you achieve that point. But it's not an easy thing to achieve because <clears throat> sometimes you are so committed that you come and you hit your, you hit your turning point you turn the car in, but you're just carrying a little bit too much brake, um, and then as you turn the car, as you turn the car in, it rotates on you, and then it slides. So effectively, it slide, it does that. So the balance of grip is where you you've turned the car in, and it's rotating beautifully. It's going round the corner, and it's almost oversteering. There's just a little, almost inherent, oversteerish kind of feeling in the car, but it's not sliding. And it's not, you haven't gone in too fast that it's pushing. So in that period of time between being on the, being on the brake and being on the, on, the, on the accelerator, the car is in this neutral state where it's just rotating. And what happens <clears throat> with the steering wheel is this, as an example. So if you look at your hand inputs and you get to the corner, you brake, you turn the wheel, what would happen is as, as the car turns, you almost do that to correct the slide. But it's, it's not sliding. It's just rotating enough to get the car to turn beautifully. So it's in a neutral state, but it's, uh, it's not sliding, it's not understeering, it's turning, but it's not, you're not sitting there with the wheel cranked over like that. You turn it and then it allows you to free up. Because effectively what's happening is you've turned it enough that the, that the rear of the car is turning, but you, as you start to feed in the power, it's enough to balance the turn and not allow it to slide out. If you don't, feed in the power, the car will effectively start to slide. So there's a very small period of time that this happens. Um, you'll see in the, in the video. So you come to the corner, you turn it in, the car rotates, and then you feed on the power. It takes us to our next point, feeding in the power. Getting on the power and feeding in the power. So remember what I've mentioned earlier, all applications need to be a smooth, concise application. So, um, or smooth, concise input. So braking, so getting on the brakes, get off the brakes. Um, turning, smooth turning. Um, smooth turning to the point that um, you want that state of balance. And then the same goes with feeding in the power. Again, this comes back, this all comes back to the weight transfer and managing the grip levels on the tire. 
So if you are very um, jerky uh, with your inputs, in off-road riding terms we call it whiskey throttle, where um, you're like almost on and off the power all the time, all that's going to do is that's just going to upset the balance of the vehicle. So if you come to the corner, you brake, you decide to turn in the perfect point, you turn it in and you get on the power too early, what that does is it shifts the weight to the back of the vehicle and it will then drop the inside wheel and apply grip to the rear of the vehicle which will inherently cause understeer in the car. So you can't jump on the power. Depending on the level of grip that's available in the tire, you will find all of you, you'll find these limits the more you drive the vehicle. So effectively what you want to do is you want to get onto the power in a smooth progressive way. Just after that that window where the car is in the balance and you arrive at this trajectory, then you start to feed the power in. And this is ex this is exceptionally important with a, a front wheel drive with no limited slip diff. Because again, if you feed the power in too much, the, the, the weight is transferred to the outside um, of, the, of the vehicle. So if you feed in the power too much, all it's going to do is cause the wheel with the least grip, uh, least load on it, to wheel spin. So that is just going to drain power. Again, there's a balance between how much wheel spin is good and how much is bad. Everything in motorsport and in any professional sport, there's, there's balances to everything. Again, this is where a balance is key to maximizing your pace in the car. So as you feed in the power, you have to progressively feed it in. If you get on the power too early, all it's going to do is it's going to cause wheel spin and change your trajectory to be, you change the vehicle to an understeering state and therefore affect the trajectory and it'll move the car out, which means you'll have to then get off the power, turn, slide and waste a bunch of time. The perfect situation would be you brake, you turn the car in, you're in that beautiful window, as you re arrive close to the clipping point you feed the power in and as you get to about this point you're probably on full throttle so it's most likely here 10% 30 40 80 100 percent as you reach the exit so you should be on full throttle around there depending on the car the power the grip levels the day uh, there's so many factors but you will have to feel that out and your car as well. So what you want to really do is avoid getting on and off of the power because if you get on too early it's gonna it's gonna push the nose out then you'll have to get off and turn the wheel then it'll cause a slide then you have to get back on and you're gonna do that and that's just very slow. Um, you want to turn it in, feed the power in like 10%, 30, 50, 80, 100%. Um, and really try and maximize your, your, your speed on the exit of the corner. It's very important. So that about wraps it up guys. Thank you so much for watching. There's a fair amount of information here. It's um, driving a front wheel drive car is actually very difficult to do quickly. And if you can do it quickly, it teaches you so much in terms of vehicle handling dynamics and all of that. And I believe it'll actually make you quicker in driving, let's say, a rear wheel drive. Single seaters are a different animal, obviously. Karting is different completely. But front wheel drives um, are, number one, a lot of fun to drive. And it's extremely rewarding once you get it right. And that balance point that I was talking about is mo most likely one of the most satisfying places to be. When you arrive at the corner, you've braked at the perfect time, you turn it in, it's in that balance, you feed the power and you hit the clipping point and you run it out and you get it right. The, the trick is to do that on every single corner 
um, that will deliver you the lap time. So once again, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate if if you've made it this far. I really appreciate it. Um, keep your eyes posted. If you like this, maybe hit the like button. Consider subscribing. Um, and we hope to see you guys soon. I plan on releasing quite a few of these videos, so stick around. Thank you for everything. Ciao.